I've lost it. It's hard talking and doing this. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie and I have some new products to show you today. Well, they're new to me anyways. You may have already tried them, but I wanted to try them on my skin. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Julie Meekle. I'm 51 years old. I've been a professional makeup artist and licensed hairstylist for over 25 years. I've worked in the film industry. I've worked freelance in store, at Sephora, at MAC, you name it, I've done a lot. I'm hoping by showing you what these products look like on my skin, that it will help you decide whether you wanna buy it or if it's gonna look good on you. For reference, I have dry skin and obviously I have a mature skin. The products I'm using today that are new for me are from Freck Beauty, Huda Beauty, and Hourglass. And the rest are products that I already know I love. If you like this video, it helps me so much if you would press the like button, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and leave a comment below. I love getting to know you guys. So let's get going. All right, let's get started with the Rich Bitch. Let me tell you what it says on the Sephora website. It is a hydrating, gripping primer. It's vegan, clean at Sephora, good for uneven skin texture. It's without parabens, hydrating like I said, and it's cruelty free. A grip and cream to oil primer that can be worn alone or lock in makeup. The highlighted ingredients are prickly pear seed oil, which provides hydration and supports skin barrier. Yam root extract, which supports skin elasticity, I can't speak, and Japanese camellia oil. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It says that it visibly improves skin texture. It says to use one to two pumps. This is two full pumps and I don't think I need that much probably. This is the interesting part. Like that, that's what I saw on Babs Beauty video and it's so funny. She was really shocked by it. It's kind of slimy, but when she put it on, she said it doesn't feel slimy, but look. <laughs> I think that's, I had to, I had to buy it just for that. I had to see what it, oh, that feels really nice though. Hmm, it definitely is gripping though. Hmm. That feels so good. I'm gonna put it down on my neck as well. This actually says to use it in the morning after cleansing and toning to prime and protect your face. I already used moisturizer, but it was a long time ago. So this feels good. Does this have an SPF in it? I don't think so. Serum and protection. No, it doesn't. I want to put a foundation on that I know how it wears so I can really give this a good review. This may not be my perfect match right now, but this is the Dior Forever Skin Glow. I know I love this one and I know how it lasts on my skin. So I think that's the safest way to go. Does it match? Yeah, I think so. I always put too much on one side and then I try to transfer it over to the other side because you don't really need a lot of product with this. Now I'm gonna go in with the Huda Beauty Concealer. What is this called? All right, this says it's a luminous matte buildable coverage, crease-proof concealer. What does that mean, luminous matte? Don't they contradict each other? Hopefully I got the right color. I got coconut flakes. It's very hard to tell online, isn't it? Oh, I think it's gonna work. There we go. So a little bit here and a little bit here. Let's start with that first and then we'll see if it is buildable if I need it. So this says it's vegan, long wearing, full coverage, matte finish, and waterproof. Wow, lots of claims. This color is perfect for me. I'm actually going to put it on my eye. Why not? My eyelids have gotten more see-through as I've aged. You can see every vein. <laughs> That's pretty. And when you're doing your concealer, don't forget to come right in here. That tends to be a place where we get really hollow as we age. So don't forget that area. You want to bring that out and brighten it up. Huda Beauty is known for their smell and I don't smell anything. In my last video, I talked to you guys about how people are putting so much importance on naming the contour and the bronzer. Like, no, that's not a bronzer. That's a contour. No, that's not a contour. That's called a bronzer. Who cares? And Tower 28, they actually labeled this. It's Sculptino. And they said soft matte cream contour plus bronzer. That's what I mean. Anything that brings shape to your face, like who really cares what it's called? Do you like it? Does it work? That's all that matters. I already know I really like this. This is in the color Getty. You can see that I use it. It's all messy. I really should clean my products before I film, but that's not gonna happen. The brush that I'm using right now is a Sephora Pro. I should be telling you the brushes that I use. The concealer brush I used was from BK Beauty and it was the Angie Hot and Flashy. Oh no, that was a Sephora brush too, huh? I think it's because my other ones are dirty. But anyway, this is a Pro Concealer brush and it's number 71. So it's an angled brush which makes it really handy to be specific where I put the color. 
and I'm just tapping it on because I've worked hard to camouflage this area here. That's where the most of my hyperpigmentation is. So I don't wanna wipe and swipe and remove the foundation. I just wanna tap it on. And on my forehead and where the sun naturally hits up here. And by doing this, all the lightness is going to be here at the center of my face. And that's where I want people looking. I want them to look at my eyes and my smile, not up here. Wherever the lightness is on your face, that's where people are going to look. Maybe just a little bit here. I don't really focus on that area too much. I'm loving the way my skin looks, so I'm going to use a cream blush. This is by Bobbi Brown, and it is called Powder Pink. I love this color. Let me find an appropriate brush because they seem to be all dirty. I guess I have work to do. This is an A507 brush by BK Beauty, and it's the Angie Hot and Flashy. I really love their brushes. I will have links to everything that I'm talking about in my description box, by the way. No pressure to ever use them. It does help me, but no pressure. My skin looks so fresh. It does feel like I'm heavily moisturized. So if you have an oilier skin or an oily combination, or if you just don't like that feel, you're not gonna like this combination. However, I am gonna powder, so that hopefully will take some of that feeling down. I was gonna say I don't have any new eyeshadows, but I do. This is the Huda Beauty Cool Matte Obsessions Palette. So first I'm gonna start off with this color here, and I'm gonna put that all over the lid. Buttery smooth, easy to apply. It shows up effortlessly and there's no patchiness at all. Whatever's left on my brush, I'm gonna dust up to the brow. That's pretty. I actually feel like I look better in these colors than I do in the warmer colors. I think it's because I'm a ginger and I feel like there's only so much orange I can handle. Now I'm gonna dip into this bottom corner, so right underneath this light color. And whoa. <laughs> Ah, uh, see, I forgot to tap it off, so there's a ton of fallout there. Shoot, let's tap it off. If I had done that, I probably wouldn't have had an issue. Wow, that's much darker than I imagined it to be. Huh. But easy. Dang. And that is why I should have powdered, because this is going to be... Oh, no, that's not bad. I thought for sure that was going to be much harder to get off. Okay, dipping for the second eye and tapping it off. See, and then there's no fallout. I know better. Sometimes I look back at these videos to edit and I'm like, you're messy. <laughs> How did you make a living out of this one time? When I'm doing my own face, I'm just faster and a little bit more clumsy. I was really careful when I used to do makeup on other people, not so much anymore. Maybe it's because I try to go fast. I don't know. I hope you notice that I'm kind of pulling it out on the corners there. I want that lift. There's really nothing left on my brush at this point but I wanna make sure to have it on an angle going this way. I know I have a lot of space, but I still do have a slight hood. So if I were to put this right in the crease there, when I open my eyes, you wouldn't be able to see it. So I always go above, basically on my brow bone, and that's where I put the color, and then you can always see it when I'm looking straight ahead. I'm gonna use the same brush and go into this color right here, and then I just tap it into the corner. Make sure I place all the color where I want it and then go circular motions in that area. That's not as dark as I thought. Isn't that funny? This color looks darker than this color and I feel like this has less pigment than this one. Maybe it's my brush. I'm gonna change brushes. I should tell you that the first brush is a refer number one. The second brush is also a refer brush and this is number 14. And then this one that I'm about to use is a stiffer, oh, is a stiffer flat brush. And this is a Refer 28. This one is for the crease color and the more dense that it is, the more deposit there's gonna be. And then that's why I'm switching to this one because it's even more dense and it's flatter. So I think I'll be able to get a little bit more deposit with this brush. Again, this is the 28. So let's see how that goes. So let's see how that goes. I'd rather have to build up the eyeshadow than put it on and have a big splooch of color where I have to work to blend it out. There. Okay, starting off with this brush now and see if we can see the difference. I'm surprised how light that's showing up. Huh, 
It's still pretty though. I'm definitely getting there faster with this brush. It's all refer brushes today. This one is a 03 and you can see that it's got a really nice thin kind of pencil shape to it. And I'm gonna use this for my eyeliner. Again, I'm gonna tap it off just to be sure that I don't get any fallout. And I'm going to focus that in the outer corner. And I can feel my lashes moving so that there's no space. So you don't want your lashes, skin, and then liner. You always wanna make sure that they're connected. I see that a lot and I feel like it's because they're using pencils and they're not taking a brush and smudging it right down. Like y'all, you really have to feel your lashes wiggle to ensure that they've become one. Because part of what this is doing is making your lashes look thicker, especially on that outer corner. Magnifying mirrors can be your best friend. They can be your enemy because <laughs> you see everything. But when you're applying your makeup, it really helps. So I hope you can see that I'm placing it thicker here and then I'm just tapping lightly as I go into the inner corner. If I want to, I can kind of pull this up. We'll see, I may tweak it a little bit at the end. Tickle, tickle, tickle in here, and then I'm putting more pressure here. There. I like this brush so much, I have two. So again, this is a number three. I went out last night and I put liner on the top and the bottom, and after I kind of thought, oh, I wish I hadn't done that on the bottom. Sometimes it just feels a little bit heavy to me, although I love the look, but sometimes I'm not in the mood for that, and today I'm not, so I'm gonna actually use a clean brush and go into a lighter color and see what happens. Maybe this one. Mm. I'm gonna try this one first, and if I have to, I'll dip back into this one. So again, I'm gonna put it a little bit thicker here, and then I am going to taper in. This is always gonna look darker because that's the first place that I put my brush, which has the most product on the brush. So this will always look a little bit thicker and darker. And then naturally, as you drag it in, it's gonna go lighter. Did I tap into this one or this one? What? I've lost track, help. I intended on using this one, but I feel like I dipped into this one. Anyway, I'll figure it out soon enough. If It looks the same. It is not easy talking and doing this. Oh well. Does that look even? I have no idea. I think I gotta darken it up a little bit, just here. Yeah. That's looking better. I'm gonna go in with this one and pop this area up a little bit. And then go back and blend. Yeah, I like that. I just wiped this brush off. This is a Royal & Lang Nickel Omnia, Omnia BOM 42 or 43? 42. I'm just rubbing it off on a tissue because it wasn't that dark of a color. I'm gonna tap back into here and go right underneath my brow. I'm gonna get my brows on using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Powder. In my other video, I was telling you how I liked the powder a little bit better these days, but I always change my mind. You never know what I'm gonna to like tomorrow, but this is really easy for me, especially since my eyebrows are so sparse. And as much as I love makeup, I'm not a huge fan of drawing all my hairs in with a pencil. I'm definitely more of a get it done fast kind of person, even though it probably doesn't look like it here. You probably won't see me doing intricate eyeshadow work. I like to keep it simple and pretty, and I want you to be able to recreate it at home. And I love giving tips and tricks, so if you are having any issues, please don't hesitate to ask me. Okay, I think that's all for my eyeshadow. Now mascara. This is where I'm gonna show you the trick and I hope it works as well as it did last night. I had my lashes looking so good last night that my husband thought I had false lashes on. I'm gonna show you one eye with this trick and one eye without. This is not an original trick. My son's playing with the dog and I can hear him. So I used the Fenty Beauty Mascara. I did a couple of coats and I realized that my lashes weren't as curly as I wanted them to be. So I curled them and then I curled them after the application. But I let it dry a little bit so I didn't remove a ton of mascara when I did it. I made a mess again and that's because I'm trying to look there instead of my magnifying mirror. I'm gonna stop doing that. I can't look up and put mascara on, it doesn't work. 
Okay, my lips are so dry these days, goodness. I'm gonna try a new lipstick that I almost wore last night, but I wanted to save my first impressions for this video. This is by Hourglass, and it's the Unlocked Satin Cream Lipstick. And I got the color Oasis. I'm gonna try it without lip liner first. That's pretty. This is a lipstick that you don't have to go over your lips multiple times. I did, but that's just a habit. I definitely didn't find it was necessary. I don't even need a lip liner. I got my fingerprints all over it already, but it has an angle and it's magnetic. So that's cool. And that's kind of cool too. It's very classic looking. Okay, not much else to say about that, except for that it's really pretty and it feels good. It applied well. There's no smell to it, no taste. Maybe a hint of vanilla. It kind of reminds me of the smell of MAC lipsticks, which I really like, but there's hardly anything there. Point is, is it doesn't smell bad. It doesn't taste bad. Ah, I've been talking for so long. This is probably dry by now. Okay, <laughs> so I hope this works. All right, so this is one coat, and then I'm gonna go in and lightly press, but not too much. And it just boosted the curl up a little bit, and it stayed really well because the mascara was already on there. But I don't squeeze tight. You don't need to when you already have a layer of mascara on. It kinda acts like a hairspray. Then I went in with my second coat to make sure that the lash curler didn't take any of the mascara off. Oh, by the way, I have been testing out a lash serum and I didn't think I liked it at first, but I also think that that's making a difference. So I bought the, I should go get it. I bought the Olaplex Lash Serum. It's fairly new and I think it's working. And I have just noticed that within the last week, it seemed to take a while. It does for all of them, I guess. Maybe it was my imagination. Looking at it now, I'm not sure if I see much of a difference, but last night I did. Maybe I didn't do as good of a job this time. Hmm. There's another professional makeup artist on here. She's so talented. She's very vintage. I'll find her name and scroll it across the screen. But she said in order to have a curl to her lashes, she has to curl them with mascara on. And she has to use waterproof. And that is a trick. Waterproof will hold your curl much better than other mascaras. I'm going to try and curl this one more time. Ah, that's better. <laughs> this is what it looked like last night. Now I notice a difference to you. This has sat long enough, so let's see. Problem is it sticks. Oh, I messed that. No. I messed that right up. Oh my God, how did I do that? <sighs> I can just hear you guys going, oh, Julie. <laughs> Like, what happened? I'm trying to teach you and you guys are probably able to do it better yourself. I'm gonna leave this alone now. You saw my last video, you know I'm loving the House Labs Bio Blurring Powder and I'm using a BK Beauty 104 brush. I'm gonna take some of this shine down. Before I put the powder on, let's evaluate my concealer. I feel like that is really nice. There's no creasing. Yay, that is pretty. I will work on updates as I go. I see a lot of people doing the favorites and fails or product update reviews. So let me know if you're interested in that. You see how my pores disappeared in this area, but all of this still has a radiance to it. And that's what I'm looking for. I don't want to look dry or dull. I want to look glowy, but not shiny. I almost forgot my bottom lashes. When I do lives over on TikTok, everybody's like, Julie, get back on topic because I'm a little scatterbrained. I always have been a little scatterbrained, but anyone else finding this at this age? I already had a hard time focusing and now with menopause, I'm in trouble, but I assume most people watching this are going to understand what menopause feels like and maybe going through the same thing. I highly doubt you know this, but I had a hysterectomy in September 
So I am through it. There's no in it, I'm done. It was the best thing I ever did. I had no quality of life before I had that done. I know this is off topic of makeup, but I can tell you having a hysterectomy was the best thing I ever did. And I got my life back. I was missing out on so many events. Everybody else was having fun and I was in bed with pain. And, and since I've had my hysterectomy and I've really healed, I haven't had those issues. Let me know if you want me to talk about that more. If you're interested, I don't mind sharing. I think sharing is caring. That's what somebody else said to me. And I thought that was such a good view on life. That's exactly what I'm here for is to share and help. So if you do want information on that, let me know. Since I powdered, it kind of toned down my blush a little bit and that's okay, but I think I'm gonna add some House Labs. Uh, what's this called? I should know it by now, Pomelo Peach. Just to pop that up a little bit because blush is the first thing that wears off on me. I can see I need more blending here. These damn things, oh, my nemesis. I'm gonna tell you what happened there. So I had a lot of hyperpigmentation right there, and then I had Fraxel laser there, and it went hypo. So there's hyper and there's hypo. So I have a white spot there, and then these dark spots. <sighs> Yesterday that was really bothering me, and after my foundation was done, I used the Bobbi Brown concealer right there, and it worked perfectly. I don't know why I didn't today, but that's okay. Did I get mascara there? For the love of makeup. Uh, I think I removed it from there. That's what I did. Yeah, that's what I did. That helped. Wish I could do these videos live so you guys could say, hey, fix that. Especially my eyes are going. Like, it's hard to see close. Okay, I think I got it now. Whew. Oh, to have young eyes again. When I'm finished my makeup, I always do a last touch up with my concealer, but before I do, I wanna take a look at this. And I feel like that looks really good. There's no creasing, it hasn't moved. But remember, I had a lot of fallout there, so I'm gonna make sure to do a little bit and do a cleanup right there and right there. But this is where we're gonna find out if it's buildable. That's what they say it is. Right in there. And I wanna clean this edge up. And then whatever is left on my brush, I'm just going to lightly dust, like lightly. And then I'm gonna take my finger and mesh it in. Concealer lips and blush are always the first things to go. But those are the areas we move a lot, we talk, we show expression. So that's normal to have to touch up these areas. All right, let's talk about Freck Beauty. I like it. This is the Protect and Prime Serum. This is where I feel like I'm confused because it doesn't feel like a serum. It feels more like a moisturizer for sure. So if you have a combination oily skin, know that this feels like a moisturizer and it continues to feel like a moisturizer. So I can feel it on my skin you might not like this. Being that I have dry skin, I don't mind this feeling because I use rich moisturizers anyways. I'm really not gonna be able to put it to the test today though because I'm not going out anywhere and it's raining. Dior Skin Glow Foundation is one of my favorites. That's just a no-brainer for me. You saw this in action. I love the way this looks. It is one of my favorite foundations. The Huda Beauty Concealer, I have nothing bad to say about it at all. It's nice and bright. I got the right color, which is a miracle. I love this concealer. I would definitely put it in my top picks for sure. The Tower 28 Sculptino in Getty speaks for itself. It's really nice, easy to blend. What else did I try? Oh yeah, why do I keep forgetting about this? This is really pretty. It's easy to use. If you like these colors, if you like this look, it's definitely a winner if you wanna pick this up. I'll have to film another look using this color, this color. What else did I miss? Anything? Mm. I don't know, I'm so confused. Oh yeah, and the lipstick. I love this color. If you saw my table in front of me, you would understand and be disgusted. It was right in front of me. What is happening? There's not much to say. It's luxurious feeling, the packaging's beautiful. Is it magical? Mm, I don't know. And that's it. If you stayed with me throughout the whole video, thank you so much for being here with me. I appreciate it so much. I'm gonna leave all the links in the description box below. I hope this helps everyone and I will see you later. Bye.